The video came to me from a source at Interpol, and all it had was the subject line, brace yourself. Police have asked Interpol to help them unravel the mystery surrounding what appears to be the brutal murder of four men at sea. Two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. It's our planet's wildest frontier, breathtaking as much as it is vital to all life. A place of discovery and endless reinvention, a metaphor for freedom, as well as a profoundly dystopian realm where the darkest of all humanities play out. Over 50 million people work at sea, and human rights and environmental abuses often occur with impunity. Six, of you. Six people are sleeping in here. So hot. This is, un I've never ever seen this bad. My name is Ian Urbina. As a journalist, I've spent the past decade reporting from this lawless frontier. I run an investigative journalism organization called The Outlaw Ocean Project that reports about crimes happening in this space. This is The Outlaw Ocean. A 10-minute slow-motion slaughter caught on camera. The footage had gone viral. Interpol had come to me as this is exactly the sort of brutality at sea I report on. I could tell the capsized boat was a traditional East African dhow while the shooting is being ordered in Chinese. The circumstances surrounding these killings had remained a mystery. No one even reported the incident, and no one was doing anything about it. How could such a crime happen and remain untouched? What made offshore violence different and near impossible to solve? Breaking news this morning, pirates off the coast of Somalia have struck again. In the last two days, Somali pirates have hijacked four more ships, including the Greek-managed Irene. It's a US flagged cargo ship called the Maersk, Alabama. At that time, Somali piracy was high on the news agenda. Hundreds of millions of dollars being made on the theft of cargo and the ransom of crew. Please help us. Please help us before we die. Please, please. 450 ships and crew had been attacked on the high seas that year alone. These clips capture the increasing violence at the time. A $20 billion industry for private security was born almost overnight. Outside of national waters and laws, floating armories were set up in no man's land with guards aboard waiting to be deployed to protect cargo and fend off pirate attacks. The oceans had become weaponized. It was pretty a rock star lifestyle at first. We was getting paid mega big bucks for it. We used to call it footballers' wages. Um, all we were doing basically is either drinking beer in Djibouti and beating up legionnaires or going on ships waiting to get attacked by pirates. I was invited to spend a few days aboard one of these armories called the Resolution. My contact, Kevin Thompson, was a seasoned veteran. He'd done tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now he was fighting pirates in the high seas. If one of these armories was to get hijacked themselves, then thank you very much, you've just armed the whole of Yemen or Somalia, basically. If they got within 800 meters of you, that is when we would fire warning shots. OK, let's go. Go 
some of the pirates, you know, they want to have a fight and they'll come closer and then they'll start shooting at us. They're shooting back. They jumped overboard! Every single time I've had a firefight with the pirates, I've always obviously been the winner, that's why I'm still here. And um, we just leave them in the water and we continue on our way. To save money, the shipping industry, responsible for handling 80% of everything we consume on land, moved from four-man security teams to teams of two or three less experienced men. And though Kevin described the resolution as the best in the business, I'd heard plenty of complaints from other armories about the filthy conditions, the lack of Wi-Fi, and above all, the boredom. Though intangible, this boredom had weight, and the longer it sat on the men, the more it crushed them. Attacks could easily be mishandled with possibly deadly consequences. I think being at sea brings out the worst in people. I couldn't get the murder video out of my mind. The capsized Dow didn't fit any of the pirate hunters' tails. The men shot were unarmed. Their fishing nets were visible. The boat was sinking. The killers are relaxed and laughing. The killing is targeted. It's clearly murder. You know, they're using the excuse of piracy just to get away with it because in, in that part of the world, there's a lot of pirates and they say, oh yeah, it was just pirates, yeah, not a problem then. Um, but, you know, you're in international waters and there is no law at sea. Why go and kill someone that doesn't need to be killed just because he's fishing in your area? A breakthrough came from a private open source intelligence company called Trigmac Tracking. I contacted them and asked to help investigate this crime since virtually no one else in the world was doing so. My name is Duncan Copeland. I'm the executive director of Trigmac Tracking, commonly known as TMT. What we did was we pieced together from the very grainy and very shaky footage different areas of the vessel. We then ran a comparison through our systems, and in the end, we looked at over 3,000 photos of around 300 vessels. And luckily, we were able to hit on two vessels that matched enough of the features, and one in particular that had a fairly high confidence level. And that boat was a vessel called the Ping Xin Number 101. So Taiwan was the flag state, but it had also been licensed by Seychelles for some time to operate in their waters. It's a complex picture, ships that belong to one country and who fly the flag of another with an international crew. The Pingxin No. 101 belonged to Taiwan, one of the largest fleets in the world. It had a Chinese captain, a bosun and deckhands from a half dozen different countries. It was part of a notorious Skoflaw fleet operating under other national flags that allowed it to breach international fishing laws with regular impunity. It was already under the EU's yellow card system for violations and aggression to smaller artisanal vessels. Operating in a pack, the Pingxing 101 had all the advantages over that patch of ocean. A small Dow didn't stand a chance. In collaboration with TMT, my staff combed thousands of Facebook pages and open source images, and we were able to identify the culprits, if not the cause, of the killing. This was not a piracy attack. In this case, the crew interviews seemed to indicate that this had been taken to a whole other level by this particular captain, and that he had become very aggressive and very confrontational with other vessels that might be fishing in the region that he wanted to target. The captain not only ordered the security guards to fire, but at one point actually took the weapon and fired it himself. It was certainly more than the four people killed that you see on camera that died that day. 
and more likely it was closer to 10 or 15. Since this incident, the Pingxing 101 mysteriously disappeared. We know now from interviews with its former crew, this ship was sunk by its captain, likely on purpose, probably to dispose of incriminating evidence. It took years for a private investigator to track down the captain, as well as the names of some of the shooting victims. Three were brothers from Pakistan, young fathers who left young children behind. After seven years of investigation by the Outlaw Ocean Project, the captain who ordered their killings was eventually arrested. We have to imagine that for every video that's shot and makes it into a platform like YouTube, there must be many cases that were never documented at all. This again goes to the narrative that there is a lot happening at sea that we never ever hear about, particularly on the high seas, so very much out of sight, out of mind of any country. What became obvious to me is that were it not for a killing caught on a cell phone camera, left carelessly in a taxi in Fiji, no one anywhere would have known that this had taken place. Despite dozens of witnesses and troves of evidence, violent crimes occur regularly and with full impunity because the workforce that operates in this space is poor, invisible, and has no leverage with the law. It also occurs because there's no requirement under maritime law to report it, no central database for logging crimes, and flag registries don't want investigations that may require them to actually do something about it because the legalities of doing so are complex and costly. The old saying is crime is only countered as much as it is counted, and at sea, that's not much. There are no skid marks on the outlaw ocean. Here, bodies and evidence simply sink beneath the waves.